Hello and welcome to my channel of Java Noobs. My name is Sharad and you are viewing my Java video tutorial series. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I would suggest you to see it first and below is the link. So today I'll be starting a new part. Since we've finished the Java Basics Part 1, like I've told you, I will be starting object-oriented programming as of today. Let's get started and let's, uh, you know, start off with object-oriented programming. Now, uh, firstly, I'll have to talk a little bit about object-oriented programming. In the previous years, there were several programming languages like C, C++, and, and so on. A few of them were not object-oriented programming languages. Initially, programming started off with procedure-oriented programming language where you have to follow procedures and the program will be read line by line. Now, in this generation, things have changed a lot and thanks to object-oriented programming, a lot of things have changed. Basically, what you can do is you can relate your programming code to real-time or real-world objects. Okay, like a Jeep, a car, a bank account, or anything like that. So this concept actually makes things very easy for programmers to program and to write better and efficient code. One more important thing is object-oriented programming language has certain concepts. By using these concepts, you can implement it to any coding or programming language your programs and codes become much more better efficient and it becomes reusable there are many many uh, you know positive approaches to object oriented programming in this tutorial we'll definitely have a look at all of them so the first question i'll be starting about object oriented programming language is what is object-oriented programming and what are the advantages of object-oriented programming language? OOPL stands for object-oriented programming language. OOPS, that is OOPS, it stands for object-oriented programming. These are the things you need to know in order to proceed further. Talking about what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm which is used to combine data and procedures in a package called object. In every program, you know, you have data and procedures. Now, data is nothing but the fields of the forms which you fill in and procedure is nothing but the method. So without these, uh, you know, programming becomes a very hectic task and a very tough task. So any programming language or any code must contain data and procedures together. Now all of these put together and interacts with something called as objects. And in my previous tutorials I have definitely taught you about what an object is, what a class is. So I'll just uh, quickly recall. An object is an instance of a class. An object has certain characteristics like state behavior and identity. I've also told you about class. A class is a software blueprint which contains attributes and methods. These are the things which you have to know to understand object-oriented programming. Now apart from that, object-oriented programming language directly represents the real-life objects like a car, a jeep, a customer, an account, etc. As I've told previously, you know, uh, object-oriented programming language makes things very easy for a developer or a programmer because any program or any code you can actually relate it to real-life object. Now, for example, if you take, say, you want to know the working of a bank. Now, in a bank, you'll be having many kinds of accounts you'll be having savings account, current account and so on. Current account is for business people and savings account is for personal use. When you're creating a project called as bank, you can actually name uh, all the methods inside it or all the data inside it, that is the attributes inside it, with real world names. In the project bank, you'll have two classes that is current account and savings account. Now in savings account, you might have withdraw, deposit, 
total balance and so on so these words you can actually use it in real time programming so that reduces the ambiguity and it increases the program's efficiency because you can treat program or the code like a language basically it's just like spoken english when i speak to you in english you understand everything you know i don't have to technically explain anything to you so it's the same way this is pretty much about object oriented programming now in object oriented programming there are three main crucial concepts they are encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism to put it across in simple words there are three concepts in object oriented programming language they are encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism now if you use these concepts then programming becomes much easier your program or the code will become very powerful or robust these features of object oriented programming languages that is py polymorphism inheritance and encapsulation makes java powerful they are basically the pillars of java or object oriented programming language to remember these three concepts you can use the short form called as py okay p stands for polymorphism i stands for inheritance and e stands for encapsulation these are the three concepts which are very crucial every programmer has to know this so i'll take some time and you know i'll get into the details of each and every concept here yeah that's that's pretty much about it thank you for watching please don't forget to rate comment subscribe